Hi y'all, Darius here. Welcome back to InventBox, where ideas come to life. Now, this is number two for WebGL. And I wanna, uh, let's, we have a lot of ground to cover in this video, but let's wrap up and review the last one real quick. Remember that WebGL is based off of a very old software called OpenGL that is still in use today. WebGL does not require any installation to use, either for the developer or the user, and so it is attractive. And uh, whenever you're developing WebGL, it makes sense to have a localhost server instead of just using your control O on your browser, and the reason for that will be made known better in coming videos, but it has something to do with cross-origin and Ajax. So, into this um, tutorial, I want to talk about um, how WebGL works as a system, how you take your data, your raw numbers, and put it through a winding pipeline and come out with a beautiful 3D rendered image or animation and so thinking about the 2d canvas from HTML5 how that works you move to some coordinate and then you draw a line to some coordinate or you create a rect a rectangle or ctx dot arc or something like that but WebGL thinks differently and WebGL thinks in vertices, a vertex, and it can draw lines between vertexes or draw triangles between vertexes, but what what is exactly a vertex? Let's see what Google says about vertex. It's a point where two or more lines or curves or edges meet. Okay, so something like this. You see all these triangles are formed from the vertices. And we kind of get an overall shape. And the more triangles that you have, the more vertices that you have, the better the dolphin would look. This looks a little bit, a uh, little, I don't know, a little clunky. So the most important function of a vertex, of course, is to store coordinates in 3D space. Where is that point? But we can attach other data to a vertex that affects the way it will be rendered, like specifying the color at that particular point, or a normal. Now, normal is a mathematical term, which means um, perpendicular to a surface or what direction is that surface facing? It would be one way to think of it. And why would you need to attach a normal data to a vertex? Well, going back to this lighting, or, or yeah, the this dolphin, check out how some of the triangles are lit um, more brightly, and the ones underneath that are facing downward are dark. And in order for WebGL to correctly apply lighting, it has to know which way the vertices are pointing. And so you can specify its position in 3D space and also the way that it is facing. So, yeah. And now that we've got that down, um, imagine, oh, I, well, let's see, there's one more thing. We've talked about coordinates and what comes next. How about a coordinate system? And WebGL uses a right-handed coordinate system. That means if you take your right hand, point your thumb towards the red X, point your middle finger, sorry, your um, pointer finger towards the green Y, and then you put your middle finger at 90 degrees and it should be now pointing towards the blue Z. 
if you were to do the same with your left hand now, make the same, uh, point your thumb right, pointer finger up, middle finger at 90 degrees, you will find that your middle finger is pointing towards negative Z direction. Okay, now DirectX is a, the sort of like the Microsoft equivalent of OpenGL. It would be one way to think of it, and it, it happens to use a left-handed coordinate system. But this is not DirectX, this is WebGL, and we're doing right-handed. Okay, so Z-axis is uh, towards you if X is to the right and Y is up. Alright, so now we have like a couple let's say we have a couple vertices and we want to go ahead and send them through WebGL the whole way and get them rendered up. What is that process going to look like? Well, it's kind of lengthy. So step one, we're in the CPU because JavaScript runs on the CPU and we'll create a float32 array is just like a fancy JavaScript array and we'll put a few basic vertices in. No normals, no colors, we'll just do XYZ points, okay? And it's kind of in a rectangle formation. The next step is to send that data, those vert uh, vertices, into a buffer in the GPU. So a buffer is just a storage location for, you know, bytes. And GPUs have lots of buffers, and so you could assume, just assume you can use as many buffers as you need, um, and the, the buffers are all inside the GPU and not in the CPU. You Once you got your data stored there, you can instruct WebGL to try to make sense of your vertex data and turn it into some and try to construct some type of shape out of them out of and what I'm by that I mean you could tell it to just draw the points as they are draw four points on the screen but it could also take the first two points and create a line and then to create a line to the third point and then create a line to the fourth point so you could represent vertices as the um, in between line segments or you could take three points and create a triangle you could take four points and create a, a rectangle so you have to tell WebGL what type of primitives or how it should interpret your points then it will pipe that through to a shader program and the shader program consists of two shaders and a, a shader the best way to think of it uh, it would be something that um, determines what shade of color it will output to the screen. That's, in my mind, the best way you can... Uh, I mean, that, that's a good analogy. The vertex shader uh, has a simple job, and that is to take the incoming vertex data and figure out exactly the XYZ position that that vertex is, exists at. In our case, that's really simple. It pretty much is just a pass-through. Takes the XYZ from the buffer and gives it directly to WebGL and says, here, that's where it is. Now, you might, in more complex situations, want to manipulate those coordinates a little bit um, but then it will go to the fragment shader. The fragment shader is interpret runs once for every pixel on the whole screen, and the way it does that is it starts at one vertex, and then it interpolates all of the coordinates, all the in between, until it reaches another vertex and then it will do that till the next vertex and it overall 
eventually hits every single pixel. And so you can, the simplest way to reduce a fragment shader is a mathematical function that takes a coordinate XYZ and transforms it into a color. So every pixel coordinate it will output some color. And finally, when the fragment shader has done its job and rendered up a beautiful image, there's a double buffer that WebGL uses. And a double buffer is like two independent drawing canvases. One of them is always hidden, the other is visible. And WebGL will use the hidden one as a scratch pad while it's running the fragment shader and well and the the whole shader program and it will fill up the hidden uh, buffer the hidden um, canvas I guess and as soon as it's full it will switch places with the visible canvas and then it will immediately start writing the next frame on the one that just became invisible. And the whole purpose of that is that it will not be scanning pixels across the screen, constantly updating the same display that the person's looking at. So if it didn't have a double buffer, you'd be able to see the pixels changing. Well, I mean, maybe on a slower computer or if it was getting bogged down or you looked really closely you'd be able to see the pixel scanning across and changing so that's not cool the double buffer ensures that all the pixels change at the same time you don't have to do anything with the double buffer in terms of code WebGL handles that all completely but we will have to load into buffers um, or the GPU buffers here and write the vertex sh and fragment shader. Oh, okay, and then bam, we have our rectangle drawn on the screen. Isn't it nice? And once you have this drawn on the screen, um, well, for a rectangle, you probably, that's that's enough but you'll notice there's one other little box here and that is uniforms and these are basically global variables or a way that you can have the CPU communicate with the shader program and you might do this for special things that you want to change that don't in any way involve your 3D points your vertex your vertices so it might be like changing the sun position. That will obviously affect the lighting of how it will render you know your um, how, how, how it's gonna like you saw the dolphin earlier. But that doesn't affect your vertex coordinates or anything. Wow so that was a whole bunch and you might be thinking why why can't OpenGL just be easy like 2D Canvas? And the, the simple answer is, remember our goal. Canvases can only draw in 2D, or with the 2D context. And WebGL is for 3D. We can eventually come to things like this. Um, and this is, well, it's like Minecraft, you know, just an open source one called MindTest, and it's done in uh, OpenGL. It's not WebGL, but it's OpenGL. Well, the point is, yeah, try doing this on your HTML5 2D canvas. Not going to happen, right? Okay, so that was um, basically a, I don't know, a, a bombshell or just a bunch of information 
all at once, especially with this illustration. Um, but the big takeaway is that anytime you are drawing something in WebGL, it's all about the vertices. And you know, the more vertices you have, the more advanced rendering you can create, more realistic rendering, the more data you can attach, such as lighting information or material properties like shininess or if whether or not it's lighting up, those also will make your renderings more interesting and more lifelike. But it all comes down to uh, vertices. So not a lot of coding in this tutorial. It's mostly theory, and that's because there's plenty enough theory, and we need to we need to have some kind of grounding before we can begin. So the next tutorial, I promise, we'll get to some JavaScript. Um, thank you for watching. Please ask comments um, or ask questions. And because this stuff is not necessarily intuitive and you can go online and find help or you can ask me but we want to get things clarified and um, clear as mud as they say before we get on to the next tutorial alright uh, thank you for watching we will see you then